Hello, this is John Smith in Weyburn, Saskatchewan. Welcome to Tuesday Online Bible Study. I'm uh, offering this on behalf of the Church of Christ in Weyburn. And uh, we're in a series on the Kingdom, Jesus' Kingdom, the Kingdom of Heaven, the Kingdom of God, and uh, drawing lessons from the Gospels. And uh, I know the Kingdom is a, a topic throughout the scriptures. There's a lot said about it in uh, the epistles of Paul and, and others, uh, but we're, we're going to look at the kingdom. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to tie it in tonight with stuff that's going on in the world. Of course, I think what's foremost in people's minds, probably, is uh, the conflict going on uh, over uh, between Russia and the Ukraine and uh, there's uh, it's really it's it's warfare that has broken out and we don't know how long it will go on and what the result will be and uh, but for those of us of faith uh, I think there's some things that uh, we'll learn tonight from uh, this concept of the kingdom that Jesus talks about and so let's dive right in this is our, our second lesson in a series we began this series last Tuesday and uh, today is uh, March the 1st of 2022 and uh, tonight's lesson is the kingdom in but not of the world and so uh, the first part here is just going to be probably a bit of review but that's okay it's, uh, it's very relevant to what we're uh, wanting to emphasize. You'll remember if you were with us in the first lesson, and if you weren't, that's okay. I'd invite you to get your Bible out and track with me through uh, some scriptures. Uh, this is Bible study quite on purpose. We, we would like uh, this to help you to dig into the scriptures and to be engaged in the study of the Bible, whether you're doing this individually or you may be doing this with a group of people and using this as your Bible study guide. And I would encourage you at any point, uh, because of the way this works, you're watching it uh, online on a computer or on a phone maybe or some other device, you can pause it and take the time to read the scriptures yourself or with a group and maybe have some discussion, and I'm going to offer some uh, questions for discussion as a part of the study. So the theme for the series comes from Matthew 6 and verse 33, where Jesus said, Strive for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And so the, the title of the series is, and the theme is, Strive for the kingdom of God. Last week we noticed a series of scriptures, and I'm just going to review them qu quickly, which, where Jesus announced and others announced that the kingdom was at hand or the kingdom was near, the kingdom was present when Jesus came into this world. Uh, Matthew 16, uh, sorry, let me back up to uh, uh, these, these scriptures. Matthew 3, verses 1 and 2, uh, when John the Baptist began his ministry and was preparing the way for Jesus, he said this, uh, uh, this is Matthew 3 verses 1 and 2, in those days John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea proclaiming, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near, or you may have a translation that says is at hand. That means it's right here, it's present, it's, uh, it has arrived, and the king has arrived, that was one of our main uh, points from our first lesson. Matthew 4, 17. From that time Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Matthew 10, verses 5 through 7. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. So this is when he's sending out the twelve uh, disciples or apostles that he's chosen. Uh, later on, uh, they had to replace Judas Iscariot, but he worked with these 12 and he sent them out on a, a mission during the time of his ministry. So with these instructions, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel 
as you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Matthew 12, verses 27 and 28, and you would find a parallel also in Luke 11, uh, where Jesus has performed a miracle. He has uh, healed someone of an unclean spirit, uh, and but he's accused of, of having the power of Satan to do that. And Jesus is trying to point out, if I had the power of Satan, why would I be casting out demons? You know, a house divided against itself uh, cannot stand. And, uh, but this is what he says in verses 27 and 28 from Matthew 12. If I cast out demons by Beelzebul, which is a name for Satan, by whom do you do your own exorcists cast them out? So he's, <clears throat> he's challenging them. <clears throat> Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. Oh, do you see how important that is? Um, Jesus is saying that my power to cast out demons uh, by the Spirit of God is evidence that the kingdom has come. The kingdom is present and the kingdom has come to you. And then Mark 1 verse 15. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. Okay, the time has come. It's fulfilled. It's completed. We're not waiting any longer. In other words, I should finish the verse. Uh, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So it's not, you know, well, the kingdom of heaven is coming. No, the kingdom of heaven is here. Okay, so uh, this was the message. In fact, in Matthew uh, 16 and verse 28, uh, Jesus says this. These are, this is other evidence from Jesus' words that the kingdom uh, was a present entity and not reserved for a distant future. Jesus said, uh, Matthew 16, 28, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. That's pretty clear. Um, there are people to whom Jesus is speaking when he was here on this earth that he's saying to them, "You, before you die, you will see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. He's talking about himself. He's the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Uh, they're going to see it. They saw it. Uh, and it happened in Jesus' lifetime. So the kingdom came. The kingdom was present and uh, is not in some distant future for them or for us. Uh, another indication in the words of Jesus, Luke 17, verses 20 to 21. Luke 17, 20 to 21. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming. Okay, this, this is very relevant to, to what I'm saying. And he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is or there it is, for in fact... The kingdom of God is among you or within you. That's in, that's in the present. He's not saying it will be among you and will be within you. He's saying it is among you. It's here and it's in your midst and uh, it's available and you can be a part of it. It can be a part of you, the kingdom. The kingdom is a present reality, not a distant entity, you know, not an entity just in the distant future. I mean, it will continue, of course, into the distant. It'll continue through eternity. But uh, when Jesus came to this earth, he ushered in uh, the kingdom and, uh, and it became a, a present reality and continues to be for us. Here's another good indication. Uh, John sent his disciples of Jesus uh, while he was in prison. And Matthew 11, while well, John the Baptist was in prison, 
uh, just before his death. Matthew 11, verses 7 through 15. Uh, after, these are after these disciples had spoken to Jesus. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John, John the Baptist. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look at those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist. Yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, this is the important verse uh, for our lesson today, verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the, when Jesus is speaking, okay, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. So this is something that's currently happening. Let me just finish reading. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John came, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. Let anyone with ears listen. Now, some of the translations say, as mine does, now the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. Uh, another way of wording that, and the New International Version words it this way, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. And that, that's really the, the meaning of the phrase, regardless of how it's translated. It, it has to do with that, that the kingdom of heaven is here and it's burst upon the scene with power. People have rushed to hear John the Baptist proclaim it and now they're, they're mobbing Jesus to hear about the kingdom. Uh, and of course, we see it continue throughout his ministry as he performs miracles, he feeds 5,000 people, he, he uh, heals the sick and, and does the various things that he does. Um, People are wanting to take hold of the kingdom. Uh, it's a, that's what this uh, phraseology is talking about, uh, taking it by force, because there it is. The kingdom of heaven is present. It's a present reality. So clearly the kingdom is in the world. It has been in the world ever since the time of Christ, especially. And, uh, but now... We want to look at the other side of the coin in tonight's lesson, which is that the kingdom is not of this world. Now, why do I say that? I say that primarily because of this passage uh, to which I'm going to refer and I'm going to read in John 18. John chapter 18, and I'm starting in verse 33. John chapter 18 and verse 33. There's a conversation between Jesus and and the Roman governor, uh, Pilate, Pontius Pilate, uh, just before Pilate uh, releases Jesus into the, uh, well, I shouldn't use the word release, commits Jesus into the hands of the uh, um, Jewish people and uh, the Roman soldiers who crucify Jesus. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? 
After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. And then if we read to the end of the chapter, he, uh, well, he tries to uh, release Jesus uh, and have Barabbas executed. And the crowd says, no, release Barabbas. And anyways, and it continues until Jesus is crucified. But that's an interesting conversation. Jesus affirms to Pilate, not denies, that he is a king when Pilate asks him. But there are some things about the way Jesus replied in this conversation that give us some really important uh, ideas and truths about the kingdom. First of all, uh, Jesus clarifies that the nature of his kingdom uh, is is not worldly but is is not of this world is is otherworldly if i can put it that way uh, his followers first of all his followers are not weapon warriors and are not fighting to release him from custody you know he points this out he says yeah i'm a king but my kingdom's not of this world or otherwise <laughs> uh, my followers would be rushing in here with weapons to set me free as you can see they're not doing that why are they not doing that? Because my kingdom is not of this world, Jesus is saying. But the other thing that he points out is that the Jews, who otherwise would be his subjects in a worldly kingdom, instead are his captors. Okay? In other words, his, his followers would be coming in to set him free from the Jews. Which, you know, so my kingdom is obviously not of this world. If, if it was, I would be the king. Yes, I'd be the king of the Jews. But, I, but do you see what's happening here, Pilate? I have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. And I'm in their custody and they brought me here to you. Um, so, yes, I'm a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. And so then he insists that he is indeed a king, just not of a worldly kingdom. And then he does something interesting, uh, as we read. He connects his kingship with the accepting of truth. Now that's a highly spiritual priority as opposed to something worldly. It has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with uh, territory. It has nothing to do with uh, government. It has nothing to do with you know, worldly things, he says truth. And, uh, and he indicates that his being born into this world was for that purpose. I, I was born into this world to be, uh, to be the bringer of truth. That's what kind of king I am. Uh, well, that's really distinct from worldly kingdoms and worldly kings. And, and he further points out that his kingdom is made up of those who embrace the truth as they listen to his voice. This has to do with religious belief. That's the truth he's, he's talking about. Not political ideology, not geographical territory. And, you know, Pilate is left wondering and asking, well, what is truth? Pilate doesn't know about this kind of truth. Uh, and unfortunately, it's kind of a, not the right mo moment uh, for him to take a, a class on it. Um, but, I, but I think we can see how clearly Jesus is drawing a contrast between his kingdom and what would otherwise be a kingdom of the world. My kingdom is not of the world. So here's where I see that it's timely to see this passage and our lesson tonight in contrast to the bursting military campaign uh, taking place uh, where Russia is trying to take over the Ukraine at the moment. That, that is about worldly kingdoms. Now, I'm not pronouncing any kind of judgment about 
about that. I'm just pointing out that's what's happening foremost in our world right now. But I just want you to see how what the difference is between that kind of, of kingdom struggle, those kind of kingdoms, the kingdoms of this world, and the mission and kingdom of Jesus Christ. How different they are. You know, historically, uh, there have been periods of history where people didn't always make a very good distinction. In fact, people went to war, believe, human warfare, with human weapons, killing people, saying that this is the kingdom of heaven and this is, you know, this is Christian warfare. But that, Jesus is saying in this passage, no, that's not Christian warfare. That's worldly kingdoms and worldly warfare, but my kingdom is not of this world. I think that's, that's an important distinction to recognize from these words of Jesus. The issues of, and, and when he talks about truth, you know, there's a lot circulating around now about truth. You know, is, is what, what we hear it, uh, from the news truth? What, what is reliable source of truth? Are people, are governments just giving propaganda? Where, where is truth coming from? Well, this is not about geopolitical truth or historical truth or cultural truth, which are the driving forces of the kingdoms of this world, for sure. This is about religious truth. It's about spiritual truth. It's about eternal truth. These are the driving forces forces in the kingdom of Jesus. This is what he was born into this world to bring. The truth of God has nothing to do with what news channel you watch and uh, and any of those things that are sort of the, the worldly king, kingdom issues of our day. Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. So here's the, the two takeaways I have for application uh, of today's lesson, and I, I hope you'll find time to do this. Um, first of all, the, the first part of our, our lesson tonight is that the kingdom is in the world. The kingdom of Jesus is in the world. It's a present reality. And we are to embrace it now. And so I'm going to ask you, and uh, I'm going to probably ask you this question over and over again. I think I probably asked it last week. Are you in his kingdom? You know, it's citizenship is important, right? Um, whatever country you have citizenship in uh, gives you rights and freedoms, gives you privileges, allows you to travel to certain places, or maybe prevents you from traveling to certain places. Uh, your citizenship in a worldly kingdom is pretty important. And if you lose citizenship and become uh, completely detached, uh, you're probably in a desperate situation, like a refugee of some kind. Are you a spiritual refugee? Or do you have citizenship in the kingdom of heaven, in Jesus kingdom you can be a citizen in his kingdom and that has eternal consequence and significance for you and benefit so I'm going to ask you do you know if you are a subject in and a citizen in the kingdom of Jesus or not and if if you have doubts about that if you have questions about that, I would invite you to ask them, to contact me. If you have to private message me or, or uh, some other way, be in contact. I'd like to talk to you about that. What does it mean to be a part of the kingdom of heaven, Jesus' kingdom that is present, that you are called to be a part of presently? Um, embrace it. The, uh, the second part is that the, that the kingdom is not of this world. And so the nature of Jesus' kingdom is unlike any other. It's spiritual. And so we need to ask these questions, especially on the basis of Jesus' conversation with Pilate. 
what are the spiritual battlegrounds we should expect in the kingdom of Jesus? Because there are spiritual battles, and you, uh, you especially read it in the writings of Paul, but also of Peter and uh, the other apostles in the New Testament. What are the territories that the enemy occupies for which we should combat to retake? The enemy, of course, being Satan. Uh, moral standards. I think that's a battleground. Uh, family values. Divinely defined human dignity. I mean, there's a lot of talk about human dignity and human rights, but largely they're being defined by worldly standards in our world and in the society where I live, at least. Well, how about in the kingdom, in Jesus' kingdom? What are the standards that define human dignity? And what about the whole idea of uh, the created order, this universe in which we live? How did we get here? Um, the kingdom of heaven has something to say about that. And it actually has mostly to say why. The universe is here and we're a part of it. Um, and we need to learn about that. Uh, proper individual rights, as I mentioned, balanced with proper community values. You know, there's a, there, it's kind of interesting. We live in times when there's a persistent and really strong idea of uh, individualism. Every person has their sort of private space and individual rights to be whoever they want to be and and do whatever they want to do etc uh, there's that and then at the other end of the spectrum really is the idea that yeah but we have a global community here and uh, and we need to work together and respect each other and and uh, accept one another and and uh, and all of the rest, we can't discriminate against each other, and things like that. There's a lot of, and those are kind of two really, at times, um, conflicting ideas. And it's really important, and what I think is neat is, through this study, we're going to see that the kingdom of heaven, uh, Jesus' kingdom, has a, has a lot to do with, our value as an individual and the way we live as an individual and also our relationship to others and how we live as a community with others. The kingdom is about Jesus being my king and the kingdom is about Jesus being our king. We talked about that a little bit in the first lesson, but we, we want to reemphasize that. What are the spiritual weapons with which we are equipped in Jesus' kingdom? And exactly what is the mission for which we are equipped with these spiritual weapons, with spiritual armor? Uh, this is talked about in, in uh, the uh, writings of Paul, especially Ephesians chapter 6, but in other places as well, in his letters to, to Timothy, etc. He talks about us being... Uh, Christian soldiers, spiritual warriors. And, uh, but obviously, when Jesus talks to Pilate, he's, he's saying, my kingdom is not of this world. And so, if we're fighting for the kingdom of Jesus, it has nothing to do with uh, the, the human weapons of war. So what are our spiritual weapons? What is spiritual armor? And what is our mission? That's important to discover. And, uh, and I think we will discover that. This is all has to do with the kingdom is not of this world. It's in this world, but it's not of this world. What is our personal role in the kingdom? And what is our shared mission in our local Christian fellowship? Okay, those, and those are two important things to think about if we want to be part of the kingdom.
if we want to be a part of the kingdom, then we need to find out, and if, especially if we already are a part of the kingdom, we need to know what our role is that we've been called to as an individual. We also need to know who our, who our partners are, who we're to be working with, and what our shared mission is in the particular place where we have been, we as a body, as a congregation, as a fellowship, have been called to serve and to be on campaign, if you want to put it that way, uh, as a part of the kingdom of Jesus. So those are the things that, that, that emerge for me from these scriptures that we looked at tonight. So we're going to continue through the Gospels. As you can see, I focused again on passages from the Gospels. And we're going to learn, because Jesus talks a lot, he tells parables, he, uh, he just gives a lot of teaching about the kingdom. He speaks about it all the time. He proclaims it as, as those scriptures we, uh, we read at the beginning and last week emphasize. It's a major theme in the ministry of Jesus, his kingdom. And so uh, I hope you'll stay with us through this series and learn lots, not just so that you have some knowledge, but that's of course important. Uh, I believe it's important to know God's Word and, and uh, you know, be able to understand it and, and maybe to share it with others. But what's really important is that God's Word shapes how we live. And that's what I hope this series on the Kingdom uh, does for me and also for you. Um, uh, I, I want to pray. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful to you for bringing the kingdom, your kingdom, over which Jesus is king to this earth. And I, I pray that you'll help each of us that's a part of uh, this study and, and listening in on this uh, lesson, that we will all be a part of your kingdom and, and be effective as citizens in your kingdom, especially during our life here on this earth and, uh, and for eternity. And dear Father, we're also mindful of the uh, kingdoms of this world and, and we're all a part of a, a, a kingdom or a nation, uh, a community. Uh, we all belong also to this world. Uh, you've placed us here at a particular time and place. We're very concerned about what's going on in our world. And uh, we especially pray for the people who are, especially those who are suffering uh, from the war that's taking place. Uh, obviously, the Ukrainian people in their land are, are, uh, are suffering things. But we also know that this is impacting people in Russia. We also know that this is impacting people all around the world. And not just people of Ukrainian or Russian heritage. This affects uh, almost all of us. And uh, the kingdoms of this world, as they engage in war, it, uh, it brings about a lot of calamity and, uh, and a lot of issues for all of us. And... Uh, and usually nothing good is won and a whole lot of good things are lost. And so we, but we just pray because we know that you're in control, uh, that you can uh, bring about what's good and, and bring all of this to a resolution. So we just pray for your protection, for your guidance, for your power and, uh, and help us as individuals, help us. Uh, in the communities where we live to, to do whatever is your will, especially as citizens of your kingdom with Jesus Christ as our king. And it's in the name of Jesus that we offer our prayer. Amen. God's grace is for you in 2022.